once you've clicked OK, you'll go back to this screen and you'll see, you know, we're enabled, we're set for uh, notifications, so level 5 and below. And here are the IP addresses of the syslog servers that I have configured. And this is something I forgot to touch on in the other lesson for the CLI. I'll actually throw this into the advanced version of it. But you can specify multiple syslog servers. In a lot of cases, you want to do this. So what happens here, and sometimes people get confused on this, is that it will send these messages to all the servers that are configured. It's not going to be one of those where, you know, it prefers one or there's a primary and a secondary. If this one fails, it goes to that one or it's, you know, in order on this list. It's going to send syslog messages to all specified servers. So the reason that you want to have more than one generally in an enterprise is that in case this guy goes down, you know, if this first one goes down, you're still getting your messages going to this one. So I think where I work, there's four uh, it could even be more it's based on geography you know we want the ones that are closer but generally you have a number of syslog servers in case one goes belly up that you still get those syslog messages and like I said that's really all you can specify from here you can't specify facility origin ID or any of the other stuff that we talked about in the other lesson uh, again I'll harp on this at the end go back and hit that lesson especially if you're going to be taking the CCNA security exam because you're going to want to know how this works on the CLI because there's really not a whole lot on the SDM that it does and we can see here that with our configuration this is these are the commands that are actually going to be sent to the router now if you go back to the other lesson I go through logging versus logging host these are the same command technically it should be logging host uh, but it ends up in the configuration as logging go back to that lesson if you want a better description of that I'm not going to go through it here and then logging trap and again we set our level two notifications so you can see what it sends isn't that complicated and that's one of the great things about SDM is that you can go ahead and use Use the GUI to configure something and then go and look at what configuration is actually being sent to the router so you can use this as a learning tool. So you're going to want to go ahead and hit deliver here. So now verification that our commands went through. If we go back to the logging screen, it does show you the properties that you have configured. And this is from the configuration portion. So you can see that we have syslog now enabled. In this case, syslog means remote syslogging. So the stuff on the top here is going to be pertaining mostly to remote syslogging. And then we've got our servers that we configured. And then we've got our host host means remote logging level and we've got that set to net notifications you can see that on the router itself the local buffers are enabled their buffer size is 496 bytes and the logging level is different it's actually on debugging so on the router itself we will see level 7 and level 6 commands but on the syslog server, we're only going to see five through zero. We're gonna see all syslog messages on the router, but only syslog messages that are at level five or below will actually get sent to these two servers. We can further verify this by going to our home screen and clicking on show running configuration. It'll pop up in this window. If you scroll down and you find the bits that say logging, they're right here. So logging trap notifications and then our two servers, we saw that earlier. Finally, under monitoring, which is a button on the top, there is a logging monitoring screen and you've got different tabs. Syslog obviously is our syslog, but you can see here it's enabled. It's got the logging host here and what the logging level is set for. Well, in this case, this is set for debugging. That is the buffer, which is is local but this is another way to verify your configuration okay and I just alluded to the syslog monitoring on the SDM unfortunately I don't have a screenshot let me do this one second okay I don't have a unique screenshot for this but how you would get there is simply click on monitor and then it will actually appear in this list here you'll have a an icon that says logging and you can click on that and that will bring you to this screen uh, we saw the upper part in the last slide That'll show you what's configured. What's cool here is that you can use this as a rudimentary syslog server. Go ahead and click update. What that will do is it will take all of the syslog messages that are in the local buffer and it will populate this data grid, I guess, for lack of a better term down here. And what's cool is that you can select a logging view. In this case, let's say I just wanted to see all the warnings. So I would click that and what it would do is it would filter it so that it was all the warnings, which are level four, I believe. So you can see I don't have these committed to memory. I know that notifications is five. So if I click notifications, it's gonna show anything that's five and below. It will, you know, basically filter out informational and debugging messages. So that's pretty cool. You can also click on the severity and you can see that it's got a stamp here so notification debug debug so these are sevens errors notification debug so if I was to click on notifications I would not see these debugs any longer you can sort by that you can sort by time which is pretty cool and then you can sort by messages which 
I don't know, that, that might be good for you. But what's really nice is that it has a search feature. So if you click the search button, you're going to get another pop up here. And it's going to give you the option to search by text. I, it's grayed out. I don't think they have any other option. So this is pretty cool because on a router, you can search uh, by doing a show log pipe and then include, say, serial zero in this case. It's basically a grep operation. And it works. But I like this feature on the SDM. This is one of the few things I like on the SDM when it comes to syslogging. It's a whole lot easier. And you can also sort again. Uh, but you go ahead and type in the text that you want to find. You click find. In this case, it found only the messages that include the phrase serial zero slash zero. So we can see what was the changes here. And we can sort by time and severity and description in this search feature. And I wanted to pop back here because I did say that SDM can be used as a rudimentary syslog server. That's exactly what it is. It's rudimentary. It's not a true syslog server. I've seen people say oh, you can use SDM as a syslog server. Not really for a number of reasons. First of all, you're not getting the messages that are being sent to the syslog server. You're actually getting the messages that are in the local buffer. So as we saw earlier, you can set up your logging levels differently. So let's say on, in this case, it's opposite. But let's say that we had set up our local buffers to only show errors and below, you know, 0 through 2. Three, I don't remember, but we wanted to send all messages, all syslog messages to the remote syslog server. And do you remember what level we want to set for that? Yep, it's going to be debugging or level seven. So we're sending all of our syslog messages to our remote server, but we're only keeping, you know, the really dastardly ones stored locally. What SDM is doing is only seeing the stuff that's stored locally. When you click update, it's pulling all the entries from the log. Basically, it's, it's doing a show logging and taking these entries. So right there, it's not a syslog server. You're getting different information. The other thing is beware of the clear button. What the clear button does, it looks innocuous. At first, you're thinking, oh, it's just going to clear this little data grid and then I'll update and get new data or whatever but what it's actually gonna do when you click this it's gonna tell you thankfully it does tell you it's gonna say hey do you really want to do this because what you're doing is you're issuing a clear logging statement on your device if you say yes yeah, you're going to clear out this little data grid, but you're also going to clear out all the log messages that were stored in the buffer on the device. So this really isn't a syslog server, so don't get confused with this. It, it has some nice features. All you're really doing is just really a GUI extension to search and uh, monitor syslog messages that are in your local device's buffer, so your logging buffer command. The other thing is, is that this isn't updated live. We'll see in the lab that when you're running a true syslog server, every message that comes in, you'll see it live update. In this case, if you go to this monitoring page and you have this up, anything that happens after you bring that up or after you hit this update, I think it updates automatically when you go to that page. But anything that's happened since then, you're not going to see unless you click this update. And what update does is just do a show log and pull this information in there. Anywho, just wanted to clarify that because some people do get confused on whether this is a syslog server or not. It's not.